This is Rick Rule for Rule Investment Media. Sponsors of the Natural Resources Investment Symposium, July 7 through 11 in Boca Raton, Florida. Whether you attend in person or attend via live stream from the comfort and convenience of your own home, please understand that we're gonna give you between 50 and 60 hours of intense programming, more than you can possibly absorb during the four days of the conference. To that end, conference recordings will be available. You will need to use them and to get the benefit of the conference, you'll have to. To that end too, every exhibitor and every speaker at the conference will be interviewed by myself before the conference. This gives you the opportunity to understand which exhibitors and which speakers you want to focus your attention on. To learn more from them, to, uh, to avail yourself of the investment opportunity offered up by them. Uh, understand too that every public company exhibitor at the conference has been vetted by myself, unlike any other investment conference I know of on the planet. In order to be admitted as a public company exhibitor at the Natural Resources Investment Symposium, the issuer must be owned in my account or in accounts managed and owned by myself. While my ownership is no guarantee that a stock goes up, it is your guarantee that every single exhibitor at this conference has been vetted. To that end, I'm delighted to interview today Sean Kunkun, CEO of Dolly Varden Silver. Disclosure of conflict, accounts managed by myself, are owners of Dolly Varden Silver. Sean, thank you, first of all, for uh, a decade at least uh, of toil on behalf of public company shareholders, myself included. Uh, thank you too for your ongoing sponsorship and support of the Natural Resources Investment Symposium. It's a pleasure to have you. I'm honored to be here, Rick. Let's deal with your background first. Uh, tell us what you did leading up to becoming CEO of Dolly Varden. Uh, let's talk about your qualifications for the job. <laughs> let's get personal. Absolutely. Okay, I'd love to. Um, so I have been working with mining companies for 20 years. And over that 20 year period, um, I have developed uh, a, a skill at identifying undervalued opportunities and bringing capital and the science to, to, to those opportunities uh, at the benefit of shareholders. Uh, and, and tell us a couple of companies that you were involved in before Dolly Varden Silver, obviously a 20 year career. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So there was uh, the first company I cut my teeth on uh, was back in the 2000s. Um, we, we took a, a mine off a company called Harmony Gold uh, in a company called Sand Gold Corporation. And Sand Gold had ran from inception to a $1.4 billion market cap. And while I was there, we, we had raised about $300 million, taking the Rice Lake mine back into production. And, um, you know, like I said, at its peak, it was a $1.4 billion valuation. Um, when I left the company, there was about $100 million in the treasury and about 85,000 ounces of production on the back of a 4 million ounce resource gold. So let, let's talk now about uh, Dolly Varden, the Dolly Varden deposit, uh, high grade silver deposit, been known for a long time, but the company languished uh, really before your stewardship. So tell us something about the Dolly Varden uh, opportunity, both in terms of the original Dolly Varden deposit and then the uh, Homestake Ridge deposit, which you purchased to amalgamate around Dolly Varden. So Dolly, as you said, it, it had a, a, a rich history. It was, uh, albeit a small mine, but it was a very rich mine um, when it was in production in the 1920s. But you fast forward to the 1950s and it was Canada's third largest silver mine. So it had this rich history but, um, you know, in the context of $16 silver in 2020, and in the context of only having 44 million ounces in the ground, uh, it was not large enough. It was not a, uh, a project that was going to move forward. So when I came in, I thought the most logical thing to do at the time was not to drill exploration holes, but rather acquire the neighboring home stake deposit. So by bringing in the million ounces of gold and the 20 million ounces of silver next door, now we're, we have the appropriate size and scale. And then Rick, <clears throat> I, you know, what I've learned in my 20 year careers, sometimes it's better to be lucky than it is to be smart. And we got very, very lucky with the drill bit and we've been expanding and extending some of the known silver veins and, uh, and have uncovered a lot more. So officially we talk about a resource estimate that speaks to 150 million 
silver equivalent ounces, half silver, half gold. But unofficially, you know, some are speculating that we've, um, you know, we've we've got a lot more that we've discovered uh, since the last forty three one hundred one. Uh, for those people who aren't yet familiar with Dolly Varden silver, it's important to stress that the deposits occur in the district uh, known as the Golden Triangle uh, in northwestern BC, uh, an area with a very rich uh, deposit endowment and production history. Uh, it would appear, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, that given uh, the small geographical separation between Homestake Ridge uh, and the Dolly Varden deposit, that they may be part of one mineralized occurrence. Uh, I realize that they are not one deposit, they're two, that they're two distinct deposits. But tell us something about the probability in your mind of expanding both deposits uh, and uh, something about the gap zone between the two deposits and whether or not you think that the mineralization might be more per pervasive than two segregated deposits. So you're, you're touching on an important theme at Dolly Varden, which is connecting deposits. So technically, you know, within the two centers of gravity, Homestake and, and Dolly, there is a number of deposits that make up the resources. We are bridging the gap in between those deposits. And so there is a five and a half kilometer gap in between Homestake and Dolly we're starting to expand into that gap zone. There was results from uh, a target called Moose, where we were successfully extending uh, successful exploration into that gap zone. But most notably, we drilled uh, 12 meters of 80 grams of gold within a, a gap that we have up at Homestake, between Homestake Main and Homestake Silver. So we're already consolidating that gap. But Rick, I wanna to touch on a point, because you mentioned the Golden Triangle and the rich history. There's been a billion ounces of silver discovered in the triangle and about 155 million ounces of gold. The great mines in the triangle, Premier, SK, Bruce Jack, they started as silver deposits. And then as the explorers moved into the heat source, they became known for their big gold endowment. I think Dolly Varden may have that opportunity. And what we're seeing is we were, we're hitting 30, 40 meters of three, 400 gram silver material at Dolly, as we move north, we're getting into a silver gold system. So it's going from silver to silver gold to pure gold. So I think the big opportunity here is to find a lot more silver, but there may be a very, very large gold system on this uh, land package. Uh, your argument might, might be that it's a, a, a porphyry gold system, something equivalent to what Seabridge has at KSM or something like that? Well. I think at, at, at first, I think the first step is, you know, like uh, SK Creek, which is a VMS, um, which is, an, it was a, it, they produced 3 million ounces of gold at 49 grams per ton and 200 million ounces of silver at 2,400 grams per ton. So what I'm saying, Rick, is the unanswered question for me, can it be an SK? But in addition right. to that, you're 100% right. We acquired something called the Big Bulk Porphyry and December, that is a KSM lookalike target. So in addition to this high grade silver and gold we have along this 15 kilometer trend with some noticeable gaps in between deposits, we also have the KSM or Red Chris like porphyry system that is thought to be the uh, origin mineralizing event for all the fluids that we're finding along the Kitsall Valley. So uh, tell us something about the process in the next 12 to 18 months about answering unanswered questions. What are the most important unanswered questions that will add to the market's, value, the market's understanding uh, of your assets? Uh, and, and when might we expect answers? So in six days, which will be uh, the 15th of May. So on the 15th of May, we've got three rigs that will be turning. And those three rigs are starting an initial phase one, 25,000 meter drill program. And, and there's really three buckets of drilling. So the, a third of the drilling is going into expanding this new gold discovery up at Homestake. So Rick, does this discovery have legs? You know, we know there's a million ounces of gold and 20 million ounces of silver up at Homestake, but this new zone that's brand new, that's outside of the resource, the 12 meters of 80 grams, how big is it? 
How much tonnage can we build? So that's one of the questions we're going to answer up at up at Homestake. So a third of the focus will be at Homestake. The other third is at the Wolf Deposit. So we've got one deposit. It's a past producing mine on the property called Torbrit. It's a 50 million ounce silver deposit. We believe Wolf has the potential to be the next 50 million ounce deposit. So we are going to be delineating a resource at Wolf this season, but we're also going to be expanding, trying to expand the deposit to the southwest and to the northeast. So it's expansion um, and it's also delineating a, re a resource. So a third home stake, a third Wolf, and then the other third, I would describe it as property-wide exploration, trying to find the next wolf, the next home stake, and giving our shareholders the opportunity for growth. So I look at 70% of the program has a high potential for success, and then I put a third of the program in the risk basket, but that risk basket offers our shareholders a tremendous opportunity if we're successful. And what sort of documentation will come out of this? Will you have a third-party resource estimate? Will you have the beginnings of preliminary economic assessment? In other words, what's the document, if there is one, that will uh, increase the market certainty with regards to the economics of these deposits? So we are going to produce a new 43-101 after this season, and we will use that 43-101 to put out a PEA. So Great. it will produce two documents. Right. Wonderful answer. Uh, those third party documents, while they're never completely accurate, are always uh, the best estimate that speculators can use in terms of assessing the prospectivity uh, of a target. Uh, to the extent that uh, our audience is interested in exploration in silver, which, as you know from prior years' experience, they are, uh, who at the company can they reach out to for more information? And how specifically do they reach that person? So they can reach out to me directly and uh, they can get me toll free 1-800-321-8564. They can email me at sk at dollyvardensilver.com and, uh, you know, happy, happy to speak to them. (laughs) SK is very cute given the history uh, of your district, but I'll leave that one alone. Uh, Sean, thank you for many years uh, of effort on behalf of mining investors and particularly on behalf of myself. And thank you too for your ongoing support of the Natural Resources Investment Symposium. It's an honor to have you with us. It's an honor to be there.